of the Tuesday, November 2nd, Montgomery County Commission meeting. Madam Clerk? Commissioner Rice? Here. Commissioner Lieberman? Here. Commissioner Dodd? Here. Stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon, commissioners, administrators, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have two items today. The first is resolution number 20, 1359, to authorize the county engineer to proceed with force account work during 2022, pursuant to section 5543.19 of the IR revised code. And 1360 is to amend the agreement with Eagle Bridge Company for the Third Street Bridge replacement project for the city of Dayton by adding $100,000 to the original amount for a revised total of $17,110,840.81. Yeah, so this is not a particular okay. change order, but we know we're gonna have some change orders coming up and they didn't wanna keep coming back to you, so we added this money so we have it there. Okay. Great job on the bridge, Paul. Absolutely. Thank you. I move for approval, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Juvenile Court. Thank you, Commissioner. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry about that. You had to try to find us, didn't you? Oh, all right. Kind of Here's okay. Here. <laughs> oh, thank you. Good, good afternoon, thank you, commissioners. We have four items on the agenda for your consideration today. Um, these are all authorized agreements. 21-1361 is with Goodwill Easter Seals Miami Valley to provide peer recovery services for the juvenile treatment court participants in an amount not to exceed $30,550 through September 30th, 2022. 21-1362 is with South Community Incorporated to provide four staff members and to administer or coordinate functional, family functional therapy, child welfare services for the Family Treatment Court Program in an amount not to exceed $315,240 through September 29th, 2022. 21 1363, also with South Community Incorporated to provide two staff members and to administer and coordinate individualized case management and relapse prevention services for the juvenile treatment court in an amount not to exceed $22,951 through September 30th, 2022. And finally, 21-1364, West Carroll Howe Foundation Incorporated to provide assistance, advocacy, and support services for adults identified through the Family Treatment Court Diversion Program in an amount not to exceed $59,001 through September 30th, 2022. I move for approval. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. County Court. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you, Commissioners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Resolution 1365, authorizing a purchase from ENV Services, Inc. for laboratory maintenance services for the coroner's office and Miami Valley Regional Crime Lab in an amount not to exceed 2,565 through October 1st, 2022. I move for approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. County Administrator. Under the County Administrator, under the clerk's office, approve the minutes of the meetings on <coughs> October 26th, 2021. Resolution 1366, approval of bills, and Resolution 1367, approval of travel and expenses. Both of those lists are available in the clerk's office. I move for approval. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Administrative services. Good afternoon, commissioners. We have 1368, approval of personnel actions, the list available in the clerk's office. 1369, solicit bids for the purchase of scrap metal removal services for the Environmental Services Department and two authorizing agreements, 1370 Altura Solutions LLC for ADA Consulting Services for the Risk Management Department in an amount not to exceed $244,100 through September 30th, 2022. And 1371, David J. Spradlin to provide services as the License Plate Reader Database Coordinator for the Regional License Plate Reader Program for Ohio Homeland Security Region 3 in an amount not to exceed $58,936 through 
through March 15, 2022. I move for approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Environmental Services, Matt. <coughs> Good afternoon, commissioners. We have two resolutions today. First is 1372 to authorize an agreement with Duke's Root Control, Inc. for the maintenance of sanitary sewer facilities for the 2021 Sanitary Sewer Root Control Services Project at their lowest and best bid of $234,609.28 through December 31st, 2021. And 1373, approve the plan specifications and estimated costs of $4.2 million and solicit bids for the construction of water facilities for the Eastern Regional Water Reclamation Facility Belt Press Filter Press Replacement Project. I move for approval. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. OMB, John. Aye. 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 Good afternoon. We have one item for your consideration. It is 21-1374 to authorize a tuberculosis funding agreement with the state of Ohio Department of Health for use of funds made available under the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and TB Cooperative Agreement. An amount not to exceed $10,125 through December 31st, 2021. I move for approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Human Services. Gary. Good afternoon, we have resolution 211375 to authorize an agreement with Laurel Oaks Behavioral Health for Substitute Care Services through March 31st of 2022. I move for approval. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Business Services, Chris. Good afternoon, commissioners. Under Community and Economic Development, we have 1376, authorizing a change order to the agreement with Carousel for the Acela Civic Application Solution, including plan review subscription services and maintenance services for the Building Regulation Department, by adjusting the scope of work at no additional cost, and 1377, authorizes public notice of availability of the FY 2020 Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report, CAPER, public hearing on November 19, 2021, and submission of the caper to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development after the required comment period. I move for approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Under County Commissioners 21-1378, reappoint Belinda Kenley to serve on the Montgomery County Convention Facilities Advisory Board for a term through December 31st, 2025. 21-1379, reappoint Bonnie Beeman Rice to the Public Defender <coughs> Commission for a term ending December 31st, 2025, and 21-1380, reappoint Greg Sample and Eric Collins to the Greater Dayton Foreign Trade Zone Board for a two-year term ending December 31st, 2023. I move for approval. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we have any no. citizens signed up to speak? No. Okay. County Administrator. Thank you, commissioners. I uh, just want to tell you what a great time and a thrill it was uh, for all of us to be together at the ribbon cutting uh, for our new employment and opportunity center uh, last Wednesday on 3rd Street up in West Town. And I think this is clearly a significant development for West Dayton and the Northwest Dayton Corridor. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to our team, uh, Chris and Marvin and Garth. They did a fantastic job of making sure that we have the right programs there. Also, Chenna uh, with the IT, she did a great job of the IT build out. Our facilities team, uh, Phil and his team. And then also uh, James from DP and uh, Mike Spurk. Mike Spurk did all of the, uh, the phone communications for us and James uh, brought in our internet line. So great job, great team effort uh, in doing this project. And also John, uh, the financing team, can't forget the money guy. So great job, John, pulling this together. As you know, uh, this facility is really gonna be spectacular. Uh, it's a help for our residents, uh, but also to give them an opportunity to find employment for years to come. Um, along with having all the programs at the job center, including our job search, our resume development, and our interview coaching, the new center will also uh, be able to assist people with public assistance. And uh, that's gonna kind of be our conduit to get people over to the job center. 
Uh, we also have public meeting spaces, and we have decorated the new center uh, in the historic uh, county history uh, across the county uh, that represents the neighborhood, and I think that's pretty spectacular also. So it's a beautiful facility, something we can all be proud of, and thank you, commissioners, for your support. We really appreciate the support to drive a project of this magnitude. So thank you. Thank you, Michael, and, and team. It is a beautiful facility, first of all, but what's even more beautiful is what's going to happen in that facility. Um, you know, some of the people that thanked us <clears throat> were neighbors, uh, some of our speakers, you know, talked of growing up there and going to West Town, shopping there. Um, of course, the owners of the building were thrilled that we're there um, and, and really see us perhaps as a catalyst to really re-engage that strip center. So um, we're just, you know, Michael said it, we're just excited about what's going to take place in that building. And um, it's truly remarkable. So we also, um, have to thank our partners Sinclair Community College and uh, CTC. Sinclair President Steve Johnson came and talked about our partnership and much of the work that Sinclair is going to be doing there is to provide our information technology classes that we're focusing on there um, at that new facility. And some of the people that take those classes will become interns in our very own IT department Chris is going to make sure they're getting there. And we know that some will eventually become employees in Montgomery County in our IT department. Um, so the partnership with Sinclair is important um, in, many, in many ways. And we've a long time been a partner with Sinclair in training. But um, we know that there's a greater need for IT professionals, and what, what a great way to start. Um, not just young people, but people that come through our doors um, to really get trained in IT, because there's not enough people in that area. So we're excited about that. The other thing that's gonna be um, an anchor for that facility is our male and female leadership we're all excited to uh, have them there. The Male Academy is now in its second year. We've just recently launched the Female Academy. Um, and those mentorship programs are so important uh, to help our young people um, build healthy relationships, but also um, kind of be mentored into career paths and um, learning the things that they may not learn at school or at home and have some things reinforced that perhaps they have learned at school and home. And we are so excited about this investment. You know, we talk a lot about investing in people and that's exactly what we have done at West Town. We're investing in people in, in our community and, and I think most importantly in the, in the West Side. And, and we all know that that's part of our county that has been ignored and we're just really happy that we're there um, it's beautiful we, we were when we were there I was like maybe I want an office over here because it's so nice yeah. and we're really excited about it and I think it's uh, one of the points that um, our our friend from um, What's Area 7 called now? Greater Ohio Workforce Board. Yeah, I should know it. Um, he, he made a point, John Trott made a point of saying that, you know, nothing like this has happened in Ohio in years, like 20 plus years. So we're pretty proud of that. And we know that this is going to be a success. You know, our, our workforce <coughs> team is going to be spread out all over now, but that's a good thing. A good thing and, and when people say well why do you do that when you have the beautiful um, job center well one of the things that we've learned and others throughout the whole country is it's great to have that one spot but there are barriers for people getting to the job center and so being in neighborhoods we know is important and so this is one of our um, one of our things that we've been doing to 
to be in neighborhoods. Uh, also, when Trotwood Court opens, we're going to be have, have workforce people there as well. So we're trying to eliminate barriers. And of course, one of the barriers is transportation. And we know that taking a bus from uh, that neighborhood to the job center could take 50 minutes and 50 minutes back. It's only a 10 to 15 minute drive if you have a car. So we're in the neighborhood. We're going to be an anchor for that shopping center. Not just the shopping center, but the whole part of West End. So we're pretty excited about it. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing, I think we had so many of the neighbors that came. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's located in a great neighborhood. And they can, they can just walk there. They don't even have to get on the bus. So it's great. Mm -hmm. It's really, it is. It's great. It's really yeah. something. Um, well, last Friday we said goodbye to Debbie Shaw. Debbie Shaw has been with the county for 42 years. She probably doesn't want us to talk about that, but she probably started when she was just a child. But um, we're going to miss her, uh, but we're just so happy for her that she's going to be getting uh, her new retired life. And um, she has served as interim assistant director of children's services for about nine months before we hired Craig Rickert as the top person <coughs> at Children's Services. You know, leading Children's Services, it's a really a difficult task in the best of circumstances, and Debbie guided that division through a tough period. Her interim appointment was a long one, and we thank Debbie for her patience and professionalism. She's a class act, and we've been fortunate to have her, and we wish her only the best. So thank you, Debbie. Well, uh, on another note, I spent a chilly morning last Saturday with Commissioner Lieberman and JFS Director Michelle Niedermeyer and Nancy Mossband of Public Health Dayton and Montgomery County. And we were um, distributing items to area families <coughs> at the Safe Sleep Drive through uh, at the Job Center. And uh, it was in the parking lot, and it was pretty exciting when we pulled up uh, right before 11 a.m. They were already lined up quite a distance. I, th I believe there was over 100 families that showed up. And uh, they registered. They came out to pick up a free pack-and-play crib, safe sleep onesie, and other great items. There was like a whole uh, you know, baggie full of good stuff. And Commissioner Lieberman, um, as we all know, started the Everyone Reach One Task Force years ago, shortly after she joined the County Commission. And uh, they have done some great work over the years. So thank you for your leadership on that. Uh, but sadly, there is much work left to do. Uh, there's still far too many little ones who are, um, you know, because of unsafe sleep do not make it to one. So we uh, cannot rest on our laurels. We have a lot of work to do. And this was, I believe, a first time event. You're right, yes. It was a first time event. Uh, and so we hope to be able to um, continue that in the future. Yep. And we even saw, I know, at least one car that brought in uh, a crib that had um, a recall. A recall, yeah, and then they got a replacement. Yeah. So that kind of warms your heart too, yeah. to know that that child's safer. So if we've said it once that day, we've said it a hundred times to uh, please remember the ABCs of safe sleep. And what those ABCs are is that babies should sleep alone on their back and in a crib. Alone on your back and in a crib. And we need to spread that word everywhere. I know when I was uh, a new mother, that wasn't the practice, but they've learned over the years that this is a much safer way. So anyone you know who's expecting or new, please share the ABCs. And a, a huge thanks to Public Health Dayton and Montgomery County for teaming up with uh, the Montgomery County Job and Family Services to offer this important event. Uh, so look for it in the future. Uh, so that was exciting. And then I'm also going to mention that today is election day. The polls do not close until <coughs> 730 today. Every election matters. There's candidates. There's issues. We have issue one, human services levy. 
Um, and every jurisdiction, that's a countywide issue, and there are other issues by jurisdiction. Uh, so if anyone's watching and you haven't voted yet, you still have plenty of time to go and show up and vote. Uh, and that's all I have for today. I just want to add a little bit about the Everyone Reach One event that we had. Public Health was able to get a grant in order for us to get all those pack and play cribs. That's awesome. And I know, isn't that nice? And that so is. we're very hopeful that we can continue that every year, maybe more than once a year. But I think, Carolyn, you hit on it. Uh, the key is awareness. And much like you, I didn't put my baby babies on their backs. I was told to put them on the tummies. And so they know now, though, that this is the way A, B, C. And Carolyn said alone on their back and in a crib. And the thing about the crib, it needs to be emptied of all toys and extra blankets and bumper pads. Yes, bumper pads. Bumper yeah. pads, I know, all those cute bumper pads. Um, 3,600 babies die a year. Um, and, and sometimes it's just labeled SIDS, but the reason for the SIDS is non-safe sleep. And so we know if we keep those babies oh, you know, on their back in a safe area. And we also know that people, a lot of people can't afford cribs. And so this is really wonderful that we're able to do this. Uh, we have supplied cribs in the past for people that needed them, but this was the first time that we've been able to do something this large. I think we originally had over 200 people signed up. They didn't all show up. Sure looked like it when we got there. I know. That they were lined up, you know, down the street. Right? Mm -hmm. But uh, it's it's a it's a great thing and it, and the awareness it's not just for the the parents you know this is for grandparents this is everybody needs to know about the ABCs of sleep and so one of the things they were passing out in the swag bags was this really cute old along with the swag bags this really cute t t shirt and it says this side up and so you put the baby. So you know that yeah. that needs to go up. So it was really cute, and I just want to thank Public Health again. They really, um, they they take the lead on everyone yeah. reach one. And I've, I've just been following along. So um, thank you. So. All right. Okay. Well, our next uh, commission meeting is going to be Tuesday, November the 9th at 1:30, and we're going to be back again in the Board of Elections boardroom when the mezzanine in this building. I move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye.